All right, here's the uh, big news, of course. Uh, billionaire Femi Otidola has acquired a 5.52% stake in Transcorp uh, PLC, which is the conglomerate. Uh, about 2.24 billion shares is what uh, he acquired uh, over the last uh, uh, couple of days. And uh, as far as the shareholdings are concerned, looking at the 2022 uh, financials uh, for the company, so we've got UBA uh, nominees there, Tony Illuminos, Stambi IPTC nominees, Mike Adeniga. If you look at the projected uh, shareholders, as far as the largest shareholders are concerned, that would take uh, Mr. Otedola to second place uh, with his 5.52% uh, percent, uh, holdings there. So we're going to be talking about this uh, with a portfolio management uh, analyst, um, Regina Wangele, who, who joins us now. Good morning to you, Regina. Thank you so much uh, for, for joining us. You are very much into the NGX. You look at you analyze all these uh, companies, publicly traded companies. What do you make of this development? What do you think is the strategy here from uh, Mr. Otedola and this stake he's, he's taking in? Good morning, um, and, and, and well, I mean, thank you for bringing me on the show. I mean, so first of all, it's actually a, a news that definitely has not filtered into the market as at the point when this analysis was done. So more or less, one can assume that making decision based on this information is more like an insider information. Mm. That does not define that, um, obviously, that the news is wrong. Mm. You know, but at the point at which it was, it was, you know, it was published, you know, it has not come into the market. And the question you want to ask yourself is why exactly is Ote Dollar you know, taking up this particular strategic move to be able to acquire this about 5.52% uh, of uh, Transcop. And then um, it's a big question for us and, and um, people would want to know, you know, um, currently the, um, uh, the, the, the the stock, you know, for, um, for Transcop is majorly, you know, um, um, has, has a major shareholding, you know, with um, the, the UBA, UBA nominee, yeah. you know, accounting for about 9.25%. Uh, with this particular move about the dollars, it's very strategic and I want to really ask, you know, how will this, you know, impact the, the, the price of the stock and then do we see any major, you know, um, you know, do we see any major prospects or mm. any opportunity with this particular move? So, I mean, it's 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 a it's a very positive news for the market on the, on, 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 on on a general general overview. But you want to look it, look at it on a one on one basis, and you want to pick out the numbers and then be able to analyze be able to, for you to be able to make a defined decision yeah. whether it is a right move or not. When we look at the current shareholders, if we want to pull that up, and that is from the company uh, financials, right? Um, could this lead to a bidding war? What do you think? You think maybe uh, Mr. Lumelo will be forced to act here and, and purchase more shares? What do you think could happen here? Uh, let's, have, let's have those current shareholders up in, in a moment. But yeah, what do you think could, could take place? I mean, I, I think a lot of questions has come up to whether, you know, this strategic move by Otidala would obviously lead to, you know, um, a move by Tony Melu. And then you want to ask yourself, is this really a bidding war or just a, fu a function of, you know, Otidala seeing opportunity and trying to, you know, position himself prior to when, you know, this, this, will, this will eventually, you know, materialize. Uh, the, 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 the fact in the thing is, you know, I, I believe that Otedola you know, is a very smart person, a very smart, you know, um, investor and obviously has seen a position and want to take over. You know, the truth is that, you know, the, there is, um, there is that there's opportunity in the oil, in the you know, in the power sector where you want to look at it. You know, and um, Otedola, you know, uh, possibly would have had a privileged information to want to key into this. Remember that Otedola also owned about 90 percent, you know, um, holding in Gurigu. That's right. And then uh, that with um, we, we, with what we see in terms of their performance last year, last two years, you know, it has not been completely impressive, you know. But once you look at you know the financial performance for Transcorp, you know, on on on, on a year-to-day basis, you know, we see that you know but top to bottom, you know, and in terms of their numbers, you know, there have been a lot of you know progression in terms of their numbers. However, you know, um, I think the the revenue grew, you know, uh, up to its profits before tax. Yeah. However, its net profit we saw a decline as a function of majorly, you know, uh, of tax. And if this is a one-off event, you know, it obviously mean that you know there is obviously a prospect the question is what exactly is transcorp doing mm. even though one want to say that transcorp you know is obviously a conglomerate and obviously has you know activity both in the in the hospital hospitality sector and also the oil and, and the, the power sector yeah. but the major contributing factor in terms of its revenue still remain you know the power sector yep. accounting for about 85 percent you know of, 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 of revenue that's right so immediately when, when you want to look at it you know that you know there is obviously prospect in that business yeah and I, I, I want to believe that there are two things for Ted to want to come into the business. Either he sees prospects or he wants to, you know, take over the business because obviously that's an opportunity. Mm. You know, with the inception of, you know, the new government that is coming up, you really doesn't, you, you really can't say whether, you know, it's it's um, it's a function of a privileged information. I don't know. Right. You don't know. But I feel it's actually a very strategic move 
to him. come into that sector. Okay, so speaking of strategic moves, uh, if we look at uh, the last takeover, um, share acquisition in first for FBN Holdings, right? Um, to our knowledge, I think he's got about there's about three or four board seats that some of the uh, Gerigu execs hold, and for, so I think the CEO, the deputy CEO uh, in the bank, first bank holdings, and then the first pensions and the merchant bank. Do you think? Um, he could be looking at getting some board seats on uh, Transco following um, this I mean, the news that happened last year, yes. I mean, uh, Otodola taking, you know, a major move also last year, you know. Um, that was early part of the last year. I'm about 5% of First Bank Holdings. Yeah. I'm giving him the opportunity to, you know, to take up about three to four seats of the board. Um, but, you know, what happened in that transaction, we saw that MTN, oh, I'm sorry, um, First, uh, First Bank, Nigerian shares, you know, we saw it move, you know, yeah. up until 11, up, to, up, up until 11 Naira. By the point of that acquisition, we saw that Tudela bought around 16 Naira, mm -hmm. you know, and um, one could assume that is actually a loss, but you don't know whether it is a short-term projection or a well, long-term. Long term, right. So if it's a long-term projection, you really cannot say what exactly, you know, is playing out there. But I feel that that's a prospect for him to have started to come into. But, you know, the banking sector is obviously way different from the power you know, sector. Power sector. Right. So you really right. cannot say that, you know, the, the, the interplay of what happened in that to end, you want to bring it side by side and yeah. be able to make your measurement. Yeah. It's really not going to work that way. Gotcha. You know, um, so I feel that, you know, um, if it's a cold war, that term, Tony actually assumes. Yeah. If he assumes it's a, it's cold, it's, it's a cold war, yeah. you know, he obviously would want to obviously increase his holdings, probably yeah. buy off some shares from the market, yeah. you know, uh, or possibly do something. You yeah. know, you really yeah. would just sit down to want to have someone take over, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. whatever he has worked for in years, you know. So, I mean, I, I expect to see that play out, yeah. you know. Um, but I feel there is obviously opportunity for me. From what I see for Tedola, I feel that's an opportunity. Mm. Uh, but I think also that there is something that uh, Tony needs to do to up his games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, has, it's exciting stuff. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. Um, look, the stock, I mean, as that... 10:48 a.m. I did. We did see that Transcorp was up about. I mean, we'll see how what happens when they close. But I think it was up about 10 percent uh, to about one naira fifty-four cobble. So, do you see? Um, yeah, exactly. About 10:48 a.m. this morning. So, are you think we're looking at sustained interest in the stock going? going forward or maybe that's mr illumina already buying shares who knows <laughs> but what, what what do you think about sustained interest in the stock going forward really i i i I know that you know the information is obviously a key mover in the market, right? And so you need to see that investors who want to obviously take position, probably a short-term position or, or, or who a knows long a long-term yeah. position, yeah. you know. But at the moment when we begin to see a lot of crosses, you know, in the market, as I mean since. The eleventh, actually, that was last. I mean, that was like since Monday yep. or Tuesday, actually. Yep. You know, yep. um, you know, those crosses was actually a reflection of what exactly happened in this. What's what's, what's really happening? Right. Investors who want to question and want to position in the market. Right. Is this going to be a long term? Or is this going to be a good opportunity for an ordinary investor to want to key in? I would, I would yeah, really advise somebody, yeah. you know, to be able to make their fundamental analysis before you key into any names because yeah. you want to look at their numbers. Yes, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would believe that you know, Transcorp has some good numbers. You want to look at their fundamental you know, the, I mean, the fundamentals, you know, do a three years analysis, a five year analysis. We've seen growth trajectory across, you know, across different line items, whether from their profit, uh, from, from, from the profit book or from the balance sheet. We've mm. seen a lot of growth in that side. So you want to do a deep dive into the numbers for you to be able to position. But for a short term, you know, at, uh, for, for an investor, you need to really look at the numbers. Yeah. You know, there are short term opportunities possibly, but will this be sustained? That's that question. question, I wouldn't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to nose dive myself into. Yeah, but yeah. I feel people should, you know, should be more diligent and do their due diligence before, before you be able to buy yourself. But this this is obviously very, a very a very impressive news for the market. You know, mm. generally the market you know views this as you know, a welcome idea. Good for the market, good for the economy, and so on and so forth. Um, real quick, what's your outlook on the NGX? We've already started the second quarter. Um, we've seen some so, saw some big dips last month though, but maybe profit taking and like, how do you see the market performing second quarter? Maybe for the year. Maybe the year is too far, but how do you see it? Okay, so we are in April, right? Yeah. Um, we're done with the first quarter, you know, uh, second quarter. For me, what I expect to see is uh, for the early part of this quarter, you may need to see some form of, you know, profit taken by investors, and this is a function of the liquidity constraint in the market. Uh, but later part of the year, I mean, later part of the quarter, sorry, you know, you may need to see some positive sentiment, you know, drive back into the equity market. And how does this interplay happen to the equity market and the fixed income market? It's a function of liquidity drive, mm -hmm. you know, and also, you know, on, on the back of, you know, other um, earnings result that we'll be expecting the lesser part of this um, of this quarter, you know, would obviously 
obviously drive positive sentiment. If you see some of the big names, you know, do do well and they report, you know, impressive dividend yield, why not? You need to see some return back in the equity market. But you know, on a general overview in terms of the H1 2023, you know, um, I, I I feel it's going to be a, a, a mixed play in terms of you know um, performance. There's going to be points where you'll have sell-off. I mean, as I explained, the early part of this quarter, but later part of the quarter, we need to see you know some sustained you know and um, um, sustained um, uh, interest in the in, in, in the market, and that, that that could play into later part of the year. But you know, a key point to o o always remember is the, that we have a new administration coming in. You know, uh -huh. uh, at so I mean, and then that could you know, obviously bring in some 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 kind of things you really can't imagine. That's of us said it in that way, but uh, plus and minus, I think I'm positive on, on the, the equity market. market yeah, Regina uh, Wangela, portfolio management analyst, thank you so much for joining us to discuss uh, the markets and this big acquisition from billionaire Femi Otedola in uh, Transco PLC. Thanks for your time. Thank you.